Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is JNR Woodworking today. I have got a lot of questions and comments about this structure that I mounted on my ceiling to hold this chute to pick up the dust off of my table saw. Um, the arm that I used is typically made to mount on a flat surface. It goes up, it comes over and down. If you wanted to mount it on the far end of your saw, you could do that. But I didn't want that bar in my way. I want where I'm cutting and working, I want it open. I want everything out of my way so I don't have any issues. Um, so it hangs straight down from the ceiling. When I'm not using it, I can flip it up out of the way. It works out perfect for me. But you can be the judge for your house. What I used on the ceiling is what they call super strut. It's a commercial hanging system for, we have our furnace at the shop hanging from uh, some threaded rod hooked into this stuff. It's got a lot of different applications. This happens to be slotted. You can get solid. It doesn't really matter because I believe, I think the struts that I hooked to the ceiling may have went into the slot. But I had to hit the trusses up in the ceiling to get it something anchored to something solid. This is a plastered ceiling. You do not want to hang this by the little plastic things in the drywall. Too much weight. You want to anchor it directly into a truss or something up there solid. This is a material. The nuts that I used in the track system for it to slide, I don't have any extra ones, but when I bought them, they're a quarter inch uh, threaded hole, and it's about, I don't know if I can find a scale here. I'll measure it for you. It's an inch and three eighths square piece of steel that just slides in here freely. There's different ones you can get. Some have springs on them, so they'll position and stay in place for you while you're holding something heavy and trying to get the, the bolt started in this nut. These are just square. They're quarter inch thick with a quarter 20 hole tapped in them. And they slide in here pretty nice. Well, once in a while it gets bound up, but I don't move it a lot. The arm system that's hanging down is from Rocklers. And this particular piece, it has a, I don't even know what you want to call this. It's got teeth on it, so when you bolt it to the mating piece, it won't swing down on you. It stays locked in there. This piece you don't need. I took it off and Stuck it on my shelf over there, and it'll probably sit there for the next who knows how long. Unless I cut this up and make something out of it now that I have a welder. <laughs> hey, that's a thought. So let me spin this camera around. I, it's going to be hard to show you this because it's on the ceiling, but I'll do the best I can. This is the arm. I'm probably too close. Let me move the camera. This is the arm that I got that right here is where that piece is supposed to hook onto that I don't use. You can loosen this and slide this up and down wherever it's close to the saw blade as you want or as far away. This one here you can loosen up and you can swing the whole thing out of the way and lock it up facing the ceiling. It's pretty easy to maneuver it by just the way it's made. <clears throat> and I'm using just four inch 
flex pipe. Um, I don't know, I can't remember where I bought that from, to tell you the truth. I'd really have to look it up, but I'm sure Rockler's sells the same stuff. It came in a 50 foot long piece, and I just cut it up the size I need it. I've got it all over the shop, coming down from my ductwork from the ceiling, going down to the machines. The ductwork that I use, you, know, you can see one piece over here if I move this camera is on the wall over there. I use all metal pipe. I do not recommend using 4 inch PVC pipe. When you get the sawdust flying through that pipe, it's going to create static in a lot of it. That can cause an explosion. A lot of people have ran wires down through the center of the pipe. That's not a good idea because if you get enough static buildup in there, it'll arc to that wire and it's going to cause a spark. <clears throat> I've had one guy I watch, he went every two foot down his plastic pipe on this whole system and he drilled a hole and he screwed a screw in there, just barely sticking in. Then he hooked electrical wire to all them screws. Again, if it Grounds out to static, it can cause a spark. Best thing to use is steel pipe. This stuff, it has a wire inside of it. When you use this, you cut it back and you leave the wire a little long. You crimp an electrical connector onto that and you screw it to the pipe. That grounds all of this and takes care of the static. Enough on that. <laughs> Let me try to get you up here and show you what I did. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to try to hold this by hand. Right up in here is the square nuts I was telling you about. And I screwed a quarter inch bolt into them. Now you want to put some Loctite on that bolt. So it doesn't vibrate and come out. Once you get it set to the right depth, you don't want to screw it in so far it hits the top of the strut. It won't slide good. Just screw it in so it's snug. You can see this is loose. And put some Loctite on it. This board is on here because without that, when you try to move this, this side or the other side will move first and it, it twists it, and then it locks up, and it won't slide. This board is just in there to keep these two rails parallel with each other, so it'll slide good. And I did the same thing onto this, and it, it slides pretty good. You don't want it real loose, so it's going to move around on you, but yet you want it so it moves when you want it to. Now the reason mine is mounted the way it is with the rails, oh boy, it's really hard to see this. With these rails going the long way across the saw is down here at the bottom on my old table saw, my router was mounted in the wing on the saw. So I wanted this thing to slide from the blade over top of the router, which worked good until I bought a new saw. This saw has a very nice ground cast iron wing that I just couldn't drill a hole in to mount my router. Plus, if you looked under, that's where the motor is hanging out. And it comes out to within about a five inch strip of the wing so it was impossible to put it in there anyway. So now I mounted the router at the other end of the outfeed table. So eventually I have to turn these two struts so I can slide this from the blade over to the router. I just haven't got around to that yet. 
and to mount the to get the uh, flexible pipe in I just made a wooden bracket that goes up here with a hose clamp around it to anchor the pipe so it was stationary okay I, I took the light down to get it out of your way so you could see the, the structure a little better again my rails run with the table saw I have to turn them and run them the other way or I don't know I, I might be able to just make these longer going out in that direction but I'm afraid they're gonna spring too much so I don't think I want to do that either but it slides pretty good there it's over top the table saw blade and uh, you can slide it forward or backwards to get it out of your way when you're not using it uh, it's pretty versatile the way it put together right now if I had to change anything I'm not sure I would it's just it works really great the way it is and then when I'm not using it I just swing it up there like that and whoops that's not usually hanging there then the uh, the saw is clear and I, I've got probably well I could tie that up a little higher I probably got two foot from the top of the saw where it's all open like I said you can hang these or they're made to bolt to a table and they come up and then you come across with it and you hang it down but to me that was just too bunglesome it was it was just in my way I didn't like it so I did this and I have an extra part so that's it uh, if you have any other questions just send me an email and I'll answer them the best I can I answer all my emails it may take me a day or two to get to yours because I get so many especially on the snappers I get a bunch of those so until next time don't forget to subscribe I need subscribers I did break over 4,000 today thanks guys <clears throat> but it's free it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe the only thing they're going to ask you to do if you don't have an email account they're going to ask you to create one and that is free and the only reason they ask you that is I don't know if I can bring this up real quick is if you're subscribed and you want to there is somewhere on here maybe it doesn't show on mine because this is my channel and apparently it doesn't let me find you one okay here's one here this is this is one of the guys I'm subscribed to this is a kid from Germany and he's quite good if you want to pop in and watch his channel there's his name now when you subscribe you're going to see this little bell right here if you touch that bell must be I touched something it is going to change and you'll have them little they look like quotation marks on each side of the bell every time he puts a video on I am notified through my email that he put on a new video and that's what you can do now if you don't want to be bothered every time someone puts on a video you just take this little bell and you touch it you get rid of them little quotation marks and you are not bothered you just have to check every once in a while to see if he put something on or not most of the people I'm subscribed to I have them all I have the bells turned on uh, I've got a lot of 
good woodworkers I like to watch because there's nothing on TV. Let's face it. <laughs> but it's all free. <clears throat> Google pays for everything. So subscribe. Help out your, I guess, YouTubers, whatever you want to call them, that you watch. Because eventually, if you get enough subscribers, they start putting commercials on your videos. And eventually, if you get like, I don't know, 20,000 subscribers, they start paying you for the videos that people, or for the commercials that people actually watch. Uh, I haven't really seen anything yet on that, but I've only got 4,000 subscribers. So again, if, if you enjoy what you're watching, push that little button and subscribe. But until next time, work safe, have fun, suck up some of that darn dust, and we'll talk to you soon.